Welcome to part 17, where we run a base side to delta yard transfer in Everett, Washington, on the Burlington Northern Model Railroad layout set in 1973. I'm your host, Burr Stewart, and I was planning to make this video about abrasive F units that I really enjoy listening to and watching, but I realized that the FA uh, unit on the end there, number 770, was facing the wrong direction and we really ought to turn it in the turntable. But in order to get to the turntable, we needed to go up the turntable lead, which it turns out was blocked by the switcher that we normally use in Delta Yard. A bright red SD9 left over from the CB and Q. There's the switcher. You're familiar with it from previous videos. So I thought, well, let's get the switcher out of the way by running a transfer of the eastbound cars that need to be taken from Bayside Yard over to Delta for the next transcontinental freight. So we assembled a crew, jumped on board, and got to work. Our locomotive is coming out of a very odd-looking structure, which is a kit-bashed sand tower from a European origin, unknown. It's a stand-in for what hopefully will be a future sand tower of known origin. And don't be distracted by all those F units. We'll get to enjoy them in a future video. I discovered to my surprise that the engine was not on the track properly, so we had to re-rail it. This is uh, like reality TV. It's reality model railroad video. Should have blown more for that grade crossing, shouldn't I have? The cars we're going to take over to Delta Yard from this Everett Bayside Yard we're in now are standing on track three, which would be the fourth track over from the main line to the left of the locomotive there. You can see the first two cars on track three are Boeing Skybox cars, but then all the cars after that need to go over to Delta. So that's our mission. But first we have to get down to the other end of the yard, which will take a little while, and also pick up our car cards. The prototype Bayside Yard on the Great Northern and then the Burlington Northern and now the BNSF was really two yards in a row. The yard represented by those three tracks on the right was called the Scotts Yard because it served the Scott Paper Company. And the three tracks on the left was referred to the New Yard because it served the Port of Everett and other shippers there and was built later, hence they called it the New Yard. But our cars are on track three in Scott's yard, as you can see on this map. Here are the car card boxes for the Scott's yard. And on track three there, we have a bunch of cars with purple waybills, indicating that they're heading back east towards Minneapolis for one reason or another. And we need to get rid of them. Now the eastbound through trains pick up a delta, so that's why we need to do this run. And you can see there I've just grabbed the engine card and put them together in a car card packet, put it in my pocket. We probably could use a smaller switch engine for this project, but we're just in the habit of this nice SD9. And as you know, model railroading habits are hard to break sometimes. Well, we're finally on the other end of the yard, and our brakeman is jumping off the front of the engine and flipping the switch. Looks like the hand of God was necessary to come down and move the cars back on track two in order to clear the fouling point. Sorry about that. 
Those toy animals underneath the girder bridge there are Christmas ornaments that my sister and I used to play with back in the 1950s. I think they were from Sweden. Bang! It turns out that just because you bang into a cut of cars doesn't mean that the engine couples up to the first car. I had to go in there with an uncoupling pick and line up the coupler heads. Well, since we decided not to use a caboose on this run, that means we've got our cars and we're leaving town. Just like that. On the prototype, there's no tunnel between Bayside and Delta Yard, but I had some scenic considerations and decided to put one in. It's too bad, but there's so many trade-offs involved in model rail riding, you can't start a list. This is a nice group of cars from the era of the early 70s, or mid-70s in the case of that Sioux Lion car. And the wood ship gone will come back onto the layout again, loaded from somewhere in Montana. And I really like the uh, Illinois Central logo, I always have. On the other side of the tunnel, we have to set the switch to go into Delta Yard. If we didn't take the right-hand turn there, we would go straight up the hill towards uh, Bellingham and Vancouver, BC. So this is a very important switch to get right. It looks like there is a school bus full of young rail fans enjoying this ride as well. In the far distance there we're uh, pulling into the throat of the Delta Yard and uh, we'll look at that in a minute from a different angle. This girder trestle in the foreground is the main line up to Skycomish, which all of these eastbound cars will be hauled across by a transcontinental freight in the next operating session. Well, here we're going to stop and let the brakeman get out and align the switch properly. In the case of these first two switches, they're already aligned properly, but I just wanted to demonstrate that a train like this coming into a yard like this would pretty much have to stop at every switch in order to enter the track that it intended to enter on. We model railroaders tend to line all our switches up at once and then roar in with our train in a big hurry. But actually railroading is a slow and steady wins the race kind of thing and you have to stop a lot to flip switches. So I'm, I'm trying to learn how to be patient and do that more. It makes it more realistic in the end. Let's take a look at where we're trying to go here. That's the main line, the siding, track two, 
and track 3. We want to get our train off the siding so that the uh, meet could occur later. So we're going to flip the two switches in the ladder there to allow us to pull into track 2. With any luck, all of our cars will fit into track 2, but we'll just have to see when we get there. Isn't it interesting how that foreground tree, followed by this wetland scene uh, just downhill from the yard, gives you the idea that this is a beautifully well scenic and detailed layout, when actually this is just a, f uh, a few minor places that are detailed at all. But this is what uh, visitors' eyes are drawn to, and they come away thinking they're seeing a really great thing here. I just threw it together. For those of you who enjoyed my video part 16, on the narrow gauge, there's the steam engine and caboose that we used for that run. I normally park the switch engine back on the narrow gauge main track there, but since that steam engine's blocking it, I guess we'll have to put the engine to bed on track three. You can hear that sound of the brake. I also set all my locomotives up so that the braking function is active. I use F9 for this. Other people use other function buttons. But I really enjoy being able to brake the locomotive to a stop uh, when I need to and let it coast when I don't need to. Well, we cleared the fouling point there. I wonder if the other end of the train is clear. Well, now that we're parked, let's um, take a look at our car cards. We've got well, all of our Purple Waybill cards and uh, cars that are on track 2, so we'll stick them in the track 2 box. And we just put the engine in track 3. So we can stick that engine card in track 3. If we had a caboose, we'd put that there too. We'll take one last fond look at our engine and the narrow gauge engine and our string of cars. And we'll just go down to the other end and see if we cleared the fouling point. If we didn't, we're in trouble. Well, that's what I call a very close call. But let's call it good. That was a job well done. Thanks for joining me. This is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains.